and welcome back to my vlog where I've been sharing my own authentic journey towards whole greater health and you know just all the things that we go through in life and all the struggles that you know I've had along the way and all the life lessons that I've learned as well in uh, the hopes that maybe you know maybe you're struggling with some of these same things and maybe some of the life lessons that I I can share with you that I've discovered can help you toward your greater whole authentic self Hi, my name is Andrea Coulter and I'm a doctor of medical health hunts and homeopathy and the founder of the Iome Healing System. And last week I was talking about coming across the course, um, Dr. Medical Health Hunts and Homeopathy, and how I realized that this was absolutely what I wanted to do. That, you know, after watching my father pass away, it, you know, far too early in life before he was even 50 of cancer. You know, I realized that I really wanted to to learn how to help others because that really has always been my calling. I'm I was the classic kid that was always bringing you know um, little baby animals home because I found it on the side of the road. I probably should have left it because it probably had a mom somewhere in the bushes, but nope, I had to rescue it. You know, I was the rescuer, and so certainly you know I'm continued to be the rescuer in life, and and I'm going to talk about that in another video uh, when I finally dawned on me that oh. You know this might not actually be a good thing but at this point in time i was so excited to be taking this course and it felt so right so i certainly jumped into taking the course yeah so last week i was talking about finding my calling and finally sitting down and being excited to take this course so that i could help others with greater whole health i'm going to backtrack a little bit this week though because i kind of missed the steps in between where uh, I got married, my father passed away, I talked about that, and, and the same year I was getting married. And then a couple years later, we had our first child. And you know, at that time, I was still going to see my naturopath, Murray, and you know, sporadically when I felt like I really needed a little extra help. And you know, it was interesting because one of the last times I went to see Murray before I had kids, I was explaining that oh, we were thinking about trying to have children but he threw kind of a wrench into the loop at the time because he said to me he goes are you going to vaccinate and i'm like well why wouldn't i vaccinate am i aren't you supposed to vaccinate isn't it kind of the law and he looked at me and he said well no you have a right you have choice at least here in canada i know there are the united states has a little bit different laws he just kind of threw that out there and i was like ah hadn't actually really even thought about it and you know it was interesting it got me thinking and I came home and he had actually sent a couple books with me to, to look at science behind vaccines and how they all get started and what all goes into them and some of the studies that people are doing based on you know other ways to make sure that the immune system is boosted as well as all of the, the problems that have been coming up so we know that vaccines are a huge controversy and I'm sure that this will set somebody off. What's interesting is that vaccines have such strong beliefs attached to them. Now, a belief is neither right nor wrong, but a belief that we hang on to doggedly without being willing to look at other alternatives is a negative belief. So I've always been somebody who's, you know, been, I hope I am fairly open-minded and I'm willing to kind of always look at new ideas and new thoughts and to look at what I believe and why I believe that and maybe there is a better way. So that's sort of what my husband and I did. We sat down and we really started investigating. You know, we're not, you know, left field crackpots. We both have, you know, a good background. We both come from upper middle class, you know, we're well educated. And so we did the research and we did the reading and we hemmed and hawed and we thought about it and we weighed the pros and the cons and you know uh, so before we even had our first child we had already come to a decision about it and you know certainly we looked at um, other other options and possibilities and uh, as parents we want to make sure that our children are protected absolutely and I'm not a complete anti-vaxxer I just feel that the way we are going about it maybe could be done in a different way. So we had already made the decision that, okay, 
because we know that when children are born between zero and two years of age, the casein that surrounds their nerves is not fully formed yet. It takes up to two years to fully be formed, which is often why children who have weaknesses or susceptibility can become uh, more endangered by the vaccines and all the toxins and the chemicals and the foreign proteins that are injected into their bloodstream can actually do some damage to those nerves, which is often where we get, we see these problems. So because we had done all this research and we thought about it, we decided, okay, we're going to decide not to vaccinate immediately. And we're going to wait and see. We're going to make sure that we do all that we can to keep our child as healthy as possible, you know, eating properly, taking proper rest and all the right nutrients and, you know, seeing where it goes. We just thought, you know what? We're not saying absolutely not never. We're just saying, let's wait and see. So that's what we did. And again, it was a crapshoot for us. We thought, oh God, like, are we doing the wrong thing? You know, we, people really questioned us and again because people have strong beliefs around this you get thrown a lot of bad negative energy when you tell people this so we wanted to just kind of sit on the fence and wait and see and so that's what we did and we decided that if it, we felt that there was some vaccine like tetanus certain things that we knew could be you know a real big health problem then we would of course we would look at it and we would look at other ways and or maybe we would do the vaccine but we wanted to get the kids through their first two years where we knew they were most susceptible to damage from a vaccine so that was our decision and you know it's they're now again not the best with numbers <laughs> my kids are now uh 20 and 22 i believe this year and they have never received any vaccines. They've been healthy, they are vibrant, they are energetic, they have no major health issues. And, and it, it, it feels good to know that I did my due diligence and we did our research and we decided based on what we felt was right at the time and that we kept our options open. And that to me is what making decisions as a family and as a parent is all about is deciding what is right for you and what is right for your child because ultimately if something had come up and we absolutely felt that we needed to give them an extra boost or an extra support we probably would have gone that way that way we would have uh, but we didn't have to and we didn't so i i'm just sharing that story like i said i'm sure somebody will have some comment and it was my decision it, this is my personal um experiences in life and how i see them and so what I would say is if you are sitting on the fence, and I know this is a hard topic and parents, you know, I've seen this in my own clients, you know, one side of the family is super strong that it must. And one side is like, well, you make the right decision. And, and, and it can be a pull between even a husband and a wife. And don't let that come between you. Please make, you know, make the best possible choices that you can make. And what I'm going to throw out there is as a practitioner and having been through this for the last 20 years already, I'm going to say what I think we need to be doing as parents is stepping up and telling the government that we would like to have our child when they're born to have a blood titer count done. So a titer count lets you know exactly what that particular child has immunity to and what they don't. Everybody can get this. I can still get a tighter count done if I wanted to. Maybe there's something that I still don't have, you know, an immunity to. Even if I come in contact with it, I might not have developed enough immunity. And children are the same. You know, we wanted them to go through having the child, some of the childhood illnesses like chickenpox and so on. And it took a long time for my daughter to get chickenpox. We must have thrown her in to houses with chickenpox and made them drink pop with somebody with chickenpox and for years before she finally got it. My son got, you know, roseola and he got chicken box and he had all of the normal kind of classic. And there's a reason for that, which I will go into in another video. But right now what I, what this is about is making that tough decision. You know, do I vaccinate or don't I vaccinate? You know, is it right? My life lesson for this is ask your doctor when your children are born. And I wish I had thought of this and I didn't know this again, li lived and learned. And really think about this is if we can ask when our child is born to have a blood titer count done and to find out exactly what they are immune to and what they're not immune to, 
then we can make a decision based on that. So instead of injecting these tiny little infants with five on one vaccines that are pumping their little bodies full of all these anti foreign viruses and proteins and toxins and neurotoxins, maybe we should just first decide what do they actually need support for and then make that decision. So that's my video this week. I hope that you found it interesting and inspiring. Please let me know. Fill in something below or go to my Facebook page, Holistic Healthcare, or see me on Instagram. Uh, I'm there a lot, you know, as Andrea Coulter and Holistic Healthcare. I would like to know, what do you think? Did you have children? Did you vaccinate your children? Did you even know, like when I, I didn't even know it was a thing to not vaccinate when I first got pregnant. And maybe that's a lot of people don't know that. Uh, in Canada, we still have a choice. Um, who knows whether the government may enforce it and make it, I, it's a tough one. If they do, if it got to be that point, then I would be asking for tighter counts. That would be my thing. And so hopefully that's your takeaway this week. Uh, if your new mom, maybe have tighter counts done. If you don't have to get all the vaccines, why would you subject your infant to all those if you don't have to? Anyway, thank you very much for watching this week and let me know what you think and I will catch you next week. Bye.